Welcome everyone, I'm Stephanie. My name is Jess. We are here today with the Protein Alkaline Phosphatase. Hi, thanks for having me. Tell us, where are you from? Oh, you can find me usually in a microorganism called E. coli, specifically in the periplasm. How much do you weigh? Wait, sorry. Well, it's fine. People look at me up on PubMed all the time. I'm about 80 to 90 kilodalton. Oh, wow. Entirely 80 to 90 kilodalton? Yup. But if you're characterizing me by my monomer, I would be half, because I'm a dimer. What's a dimer? Here is a good look of me in a dimer state. Oh, wait, that's my friend's Insta picture. Oops. I look better in Snap, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, for real now. This is a better look of me in a dimer state. I have two active sites where three cations are located, magnesium and two zinc. Catalyzed reaction occurs in my active site. Nice, nice. So tell us what you do on the daily. Ooh, ooh, on the daily, I hydrolyze phosphomonal esters to make them into alcohol and inorganic phosphate. Yeah. That's awesome. Now let's give a hand for alkaline phosphate. Welcome to the Protein Woman. Today, we will be separating alkaline phosphatase from E. coli. As you can see, the scientists behind me are waiting for me to purify this protein. So, to speed up this process, I have a guest with me. Say what's up to Stephanie. Hi. Okay, let's get down and dirty. Steph, you can get started on our osmotic shock solution, which is used to change the solute concentration around the cell, which would change the water movement across the cell membrane. This helps cell lysis, since the protein is buried in the plasma membrane. I'll start with the dialysis solution, which we need to get to pH 7.4, and it'll be used later. Done with the solution. I'll add the E. coli in and store it in the freezer. In true cooking show fashion, we have an already prepared solution, so we'll add magnesium sulfate for heat treatment of the solution to protect the alkaline phosphatase protein from denaturation. Don't forget to save some as fraction one for our Bradford assay. Thanks, Steph. It's not like I'm a scientist or anything. Okay, I'll heat the tube and separate the super needed for fraction two. No need for the attitude, Jess. You can also add the ammonium sulfate to fraction 2 as well. We are adding ammonium sulfate to decrease the solubility of the protein, which will make it precipitate into a pellet form. With fraction 2, we are going to be dialyzing and desalting it. We are going to dialyze the solution so that we can separate the smaller contaminants from the protein molecule, which is a larger molecule. We dissolve the solution to rid it of excess ammonium sulfate. We will collect the run through from the desalting column as fraction 3. Now we get to do it, PLC. Yup, that's protein liquid chromatography. We use this to further purify the alkaline phosphatase protein from other contaminants. We equilibrate the column with buffer A, which contains no salt. Then we add the protein, which has an affinity for the column and will bind with the resin. Then buffer B, which has sodium chloride, will be gradually added to elute the protein from the column by replacing the protein on the resin with the salt. The flow through will be collected as fraction 4. Now we can run Bradford and enzyme kinetics assay on the fractions. Hey man, I don't know what to do anymore. Activation energy is way too high. discoveries. Throughout the show, we have been showing the process of how to purify the alkaline phosphatase protein from E. coli. Recall that the fractions were concentrated to provide optimal results for purity determination. 
information. Now, let's determine whether or not we purify the protein. Now that is one amazing SES page. It sure is, Stephanie. Let's take a closer look at this beauty. We use sodium dodecyl sulfate to break apart the protein. The first row is the promega ladder, and the rest of the rows are fraction 1s through fraction 4, left to right. The alkaline phosphatase protein appears in round 50 kilodaltons since it is a dimer, and the SDS broke the protein into a monomer. As you can see, F1 has the most lines, which signifies impurities in the fraction. As we move down the fractions, the lines outside of 50 kilodaltons decrease, signifying a more pure product. However, as you can see, there is an extra line in fraction 4, which although faintly visible, does indicate that the product does contain some impurities. Now, let's take a look at the western blots. Wow, what a majestic western blot. The western blot was done on a nutricellulose membrane. This membrane was soaked in a milk solution with TBS overnight. Remember that western blot is semi-quantitative and tells us whether or not the protein of interest exists in each fraction. The results we see are after antibody incubations and washes. The kaleidoscope marker is on the far left, and next to that, the fractions are in descending order from fraction 4 to fraction 1. As you can see, the protein of interest is present in each fraction since there is a line around the 50 kilodalton marker. In conclusion, we can determine with strong confidence that we're able to mostly isolate the alkaline phosphatase protein with slight impurities. Thanks for tuning in with us tonight. Tune in next week to learn more about the beautiful alkaline phosphatase protein on AP Discoveries.